Welcome, everyone. Welcome. My name is Sam, and it is my esteemed pleasure to welcome you to day two of our 10th annual Jamf Nation User Conference. I hope you all had a wonderful day one. And as someone who's been to all 10 of these, let me tell you just how far we've come. Now, I've heard our, uh, many stories about our first JNUC. It was in a wine bar. There was, in fact, about 100 people there. But what they haven't told you is that for those 100 people, somehow we only had one air pot of coffee for everyone that was in there. So I don't know whose job that was. Uh, but, and, a, and a family-sized box of Ritz crackers because we were keeping it classy. <laughs> Nonetheless, the fan favorite session, I remember it well. It was from uh, Bill Smith, and it was a very thorough dissertation on the intricities of the Microsoft Office for Mac 2008 installer and subsequent configuration. So it created a lot of heat and passion in the room for that content. But nonetheless, we were packed like sardines in a single room, and it's, it's amazing to see us here on this 10th year. We are 20 times bigger. Uh, we have 20 times more of the sessions, and at least the last time I checked, I don't know, the coffee was still flowing strong. So we've gotten better in some areas. But as far as we've come uh, with technology, some things have stayed the same, and one of the great things that I've noticed that stayed the same is the passion and the amazement that you all bring in pushing the boundaries of what's possible in our industry. And this becomes the JNOC tradition. And I'm so excited to show you what we've been up to for the past 12 months and for you to take that and show us the new edge of what is possible. Now, before we go forward, I want to take you back just a little bit further with a personal story about my first experience with technology in education. And like many of you, it was with the very stable installed word, Apple IIe. Now, I was fortunate enough to have this as a portable computer. Uh, it, was, uh, it was attached to a, an AV cart that was about 38 inches wide. And the only reason I remember that is because it was slightly larger than your average classroom door, so they'd kind of have to angle it in when they brought it in. And the purpose of this portable computer was to teach a lesson in math. Uh, our fourth grade class had been debating the merits of the number one million. And if, in case you didn't know, you could debate the merits of, of numbers. But we uh, had been, it was just hard for us to understand how to conceive that numbers could get that large. It just seemed unattainable or unreasonable in our world. And so our teacher had worked with the IT person for our school, and they had created a program on this Apple IIe to start at one zero and count incrementally by ones and get all the way to one million. Wow. So after plugging it in and, and the excitement kind of grew as that first green flicker of the screen came up, and with some clicking and ticking, the IT person stood back, and after a brief introduction and ceremony from our teacher, pressed the return key, and the numbers started flying across the screen. Now, it seemed like seconds. It probably took minutes at the end. Finally, there was a single one with six zeros after it. And the fourth graders in that class cheered in awe of, of this accomplishment of this beige superpower in front of us. And with 24 jaws on the floor in amazement, just as quickly as that computer had come into our world, it was wheeled out. I don't know, presumably to go down the hall to the fifth graders where I was going to teach a history lesson on Oregon Trail. I don't know what happened to it, but it wasn't in our classroom anymore. Now, I tell you this story only to tell you how far we've come, and not in computing or technology, and definitely not in fourth grade math, but rather how far we've come with the interaction that we have with technology. And you know this, but today it's every student and every teacher, every single day, is exposed to technology. And a study by Common Sense Media showed that children ages 8 to 12 spend on average over four hours in front of a screen per day. And when you get to teenagers, it increases, and they spend on average over six hours per day. In many cases, this is happening right in our schools. And our role as IT today is no longer to be this lion tamer where we're helping them directly with the technology, but we are rather conductors in the orchestra that exists with the experience of the technology in front of these students. 
And today that experience or the expectation from those using technology is enablement. And the consumers or the end users of these devices want to be the creators and the architects of what they want to achieve. And it's not just for the content, it's for the experience. Now, fortunately, the technology that we're working with is so adaptable to this. And it doesn't seem like this, but when you look at the recent history of this, it's happened. You think about it, imaging is no longer. And with automated device enrollment, we're bringing more power into the hands of those who are using the technology. And when it's settings, we no longer have often MCX or manual P-list modifications, but we're setting things with configuration profiles and can control the state of the devices. And for content distribution, we're not manually packaging every single element that goes onto a device, but we're leveraging things like VPP and apps and books to get content onto the devices. And as dramatic as these changes seem on the back end of the technology that we have to deal with, where we're more empowered to make change is on that front end and the experience that our users have with that. But then also herein lies the challenge that we have to deal with. And it's unique in education. And it's complex in education. And you look at it and you say, a normal K-12 school, you have 13 grades, a multitude of different subjects. And depending on the size of your district, you'll have tens or hundreds or thousands of teachers. So you have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of different configurations that you need to control with the common curriculum and the individual preferences that you have with those teachers. So that you are not empowered any longer to have you or your staff be personally responsible for this. You need to bring in those other stakeholders that you're working with. And it's interesting to say because oftentimes we bring up the concept of complexity. Uh, as, as a term of enterprise, and there's a lot of discussion right now about enterprise need of, of Apple, and Apple and the enterprise. And excuse me when I say, especially to those, those humbled and pressured administrators, the ones that sit beneath us on the first floor today who are using this software for commercial purposes. When we're talking about enterprise, and if there's one thing that I've learned in my many years of dedication to Apple and the enterprise, it's that no one out enterprises the enterprise like you, education. And if we're going to move forward with this, uh, we, we start with what we believe. And what we believe, the common thing that we all believe is that Apple is a superior platform for allowing our students to learn. And we believe this because of the form factor of the device. We believe it because of the intuitiveness of the interface of the operating systems that we're using. And we believe it because it's connected to the largest ecosystem of content in the world, in the App Store. And so if we believe this, we need to move forward with a common strategy. And to invite someone to the stage that can best represent that strategy, I want to bring someone that's been doing this for an awfully long time, he has, he, I was first introduced to him six years ago when he came to Jamf. He had a, a wild idea about a, a teacher application on iPads, and that led us down a path to the first ever iPad teacher application. It was called Casper Focus. His 30-plus career in education, he's been a, a teacher, a curriculum driver, a technologist, a director of IT. He's, he's been a leader in five different K-12 schools and a university as well. We are very lucky to have him as our global education strategist. Please let me welcome David Saltmarsh. Thank you. Thank you. This one. Thank you, Sam, and, and thank you all for, for coming out today. I put a slide up here as a reference and a reflection for myself. Uh, this is my eighth JNUC. My first was in 2011 as an attendee. And while this purpose, mission, and values, this statement is very clear today, back then it was in the actions of the people I was introduced to. The conversations I saw the attendees having with the hundred or so jamps that were there at the time. And what I was hearing was people trying to do amazing things and get better and improve. And that attitude, uh, I still believe, is here today at Jamf with over 1,100 jams, except that we, we continue to challenge each other. I challenge myself and reflect on a daily basis on how I'm doing. 
And uh, he mentioned uh, a 30-something years career, and so I am older, and sometimes older people tend to retell stories they forget they tell you. And I know I've told some people in this audience how in 2011, I left, and I got out of the airport, I called my wife, and I said, I think I found the place I want to spend the rest of my career. Well, the ad piece to that story is here, I've now been at Jamf almost seven years, and that's the longest tenure I've had in any organization. And I'm very proud of that and the fact that standing here today, I still, still feel like this is the place I'm going to thrive in my career. And I'm actually thriving personally better than I've done in the past 30 years. But when I started in education, I actually started with having to write down my purpose statement for why I wanted to be an educator and what I hope to accomplish. And I'm hoping at Jamf we can expand our current values to what do they mean for education? What does it mean to help organizations succeed with Apple? And we do believe that every student deserves the best learning opportunity. That statement helps us get started, but I want something to help us all stay connected. And I actually reviewed <laughs> my document I wrote in 19, 1988 <laughs> about my uh, educational purpose. And it actually, sure enough, it actually aligns to what Jamf has come up with. And, uh, you know, we start obviously still with this notion about all students, but we really focus on that all students. And to get to all students, we do have to focus on the educators and giving them tools that just work, that they can rely on. We want to help them to change possibly their instructional practices. Back in 1988, we called it constructionism. Active learning is pretty much still the same thing we were trying to do back in 1988. I just didn't have the technology tools or the supporting staff to help me accomplish that. We wanted to create an environment where it was active and generally personalized. Maybe we called it um, you know, individualizing the instruction. Maybe we call it diversifying. But we were trying to get personal. And, and if there was one thing I listed in as I started as an educator, it was about equity. It was about this focus on equity for all students and empowering all. When we think about that, this all students, I've, I've heard from many of you, and we've seen it for ourselves, that we're trying to shift to focus on that end user, the personal side that every student needs. And as I travel, you know, and, and, and locally even, at the University of Wisconsin where we hold an annual coding camp. We've seen them change the environment. I was out at Hopkins School District last week where that video was shot and, and walked into a classroom where I thought I was going to rearrange the furniture to be active learning, and it was magical. The alternative seatings that they had was amazing. We're seeing it in universities around the world. We're seeing it in K-12. And they're doing it for a purpose. They're trying to set up an environment where students with different interests and from diverse backgrounds can collaborate together to problem solve, critical think, fail, and fail fast and adjust and then create. And here at Jamf, one of the things I realized right away that we could do to help facilitate this was enable you to enable the teacher to customize the privileges so that there is no one size fits all and so that we can make settings agile and adjust to the moment and to the specific need of the child and the student. And of course, we want to be able to get the content, the right content, when it's needed to the students. And we believe that's going to help with that knowledge of getting all students and creating this environment. And I didn't move to my other pictures. Uh, the teachers. Now, we put a lot of technology in students' hands. We need to focus on the teachers. And, and I, oh, I remember doing the best I could, having the best lesson plan, all the activities set, and then so a couple of my children, my students, showed up without eating breakfast. Well, I learned I had to be agile. I had to mitigate those things. But I did have to rely on some common expectations. And what we're hoping you can all help the classroom teachers do. Sorry, I am backing up one. If I'm, it's sort of like downhill skiing, if you make a mistake, you feel a lot better moving forward. Uh, so for me, as far as advancing a slide and getting this clicker, they know not to give me a demo. Uh, they know the, the, the thing about giving me technology is this is about the most you can have me do and think uh, simultaneously, and, and I admit my limitations. But if you look at the teacher here, 
Knowing that the students can connect to a robotic ball simply and easily, the drones we're using in the Innovation Hub program that we're helping with, the digital pencils just connecting, the teacher sitting at a table knowing that a group of students off at another table are limited, but not so limited, to five or six different apps that they should be working on, that they still have agility to move between apps, but the teacher can be off working with another group of students. We have the Apple TVs that just natively don't make me stand in one spot, stand at a podium, because they know if I have to ask a child to come to that podium to present, I'm probably just not going to do it because it's too much time and it's risky and you might fail in front of a large group of people. So we can have a student present from anywhere in the room. We can encourage student agency and let the students become leaders because with the Apple TV they can do that and the teachers know that that can just happen. We've also seen to a scale, to a set of scale, and we're at five innovation hubs and we're about to put our six next week, where we are using managed Apple IDs. And when you only have 25 iPads and you have hundreds of kids coming in, them knowing that I have pre-K kids touching their picture, putting the four digits in <laughs> that they made up, and their work is still there. And they don't have to worry about somebody else deleting their work or the fact that it got overwritten. These are the things we want to make reliable for teachers so that they will go ahead and shift to that other aspect of changing the environment. Because I need to feel comfortable. I need to know that I'm not adding time in the classroom, that I'm able to make the transitions go smoothly. And that will allow me to shift my focus. If you look at the teachers in this photo, they are not standing at a podium. They are not the sage on the stage. They are in the back of the room or assisting the child, asking them questions versus answering. If you look at the students in this environment, they are actively engaged. The collaboration they're doing is not writing a paragraph and then the other child writing a paragraph and they post paste it together and submit it. That's not the kind of collaboration going on here. It's critical thinking and it's problem solving. And I really want to emphasize the piece that helps then focus on equity because getting it to be personal, getting it to be active is a great start, but making sure it's the, available for all students. And often we can throw out buzzwords, just like saying we have a value statement, I wanna get a little deeper. I like to get a little deeper on what we believe we should be talking about with equity. Because many people focus on a handful of concepts around equity, and I'd like to suggest that there's several layers. And it starts with the instructional the instructional content and the instructional practices. And if I can't shift my instructional practices, if you don't help supply capabilities that allow me to be agile and be anywhere in the room and allow Jimmy to sit in that beanbag chair, I probably won't practice the pedagogy that my, my leaders are asking me to do. And of course, we think about technology. And of course, we think about putting devices in students' hands. However, the capabilities of the, that device are really something we need to have the rubric on. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. And then usually the next thing is about bandwidth. Of course, we have to have internet access. However, I'd like to say if you choose the right device, I can have students not necessarily relying on internet access. It'd be great if you put it on the bus, all the buses, but wouldn't it be great if they're creating and editing that video somewhere where they don't have internet? So let's go a little deeper. The affordances and the capabilities are actually at the top of my rubric when I'm evaluating equity. What capabilities, what, what dynamic abilities for uh, dynamically linked representations that the child can really get an aha for themselves rather than someone at a blackboard? Can they create? Can they edit? Can they fail and fail fast and try again? And when we say this, right off the bat, I want to put assistive technology into the conversation. If we talk about uh, the need for assistive technology and universal design, is we're thinking from the beginning, because here at Jamf, and I know personally, professionally and personally, that assistive technology helps all. And we should put that at the forefront when we're thinking about the devices we put into students' hands and the capabilities. It can't be an afterthought. And that will lead to the transformational type of instruction that can happen when we're not thinking things after the fact and we're thinking about all students. Because as Sammer shows us, forget students thinking critically and solving problems, we have to start that base. 
And then I want to follow into something talking about the staff and people that are involved because the stakeholders are vital to this conversation. Whether or not my pre-service happened to include some technology, I got lucky. I did my first pre-service teaching at the School for the Deaf, and I practiced having to have a microphone so that all students, and I could use my t this voice instead of my first sergeant voice, uh, because I was in an open classroom. And then I had an apple in the classroom. <laughs> And actually, Sam, I was that guy at one point in my career where I was moving this thing around. And I wish I had the photo today of five of them in this one room where I then wheeled them all in and, and set up my first mini lab, my portable mini lab. But when we think about the teachers, do we have ongoing professional development? In my experience, it's literally the first thing cut. You know, this is what we should do. We need this, we need this, and this. Yeah, but do we really need that much teacher professional development? Do we need that ongoing? But think about retaining teachers in your district. Think about in those areas that are uh, economically deprived, perhaps, and teachers being retained. It's a huge piece, important piece. And then there's this other group, the IT. I know many of you in this room. room. I know how focused you are on being service-focused and being a servant to the staff you work with. And I know the dedication you have. And this is a critical piece. If we take this to the next layer, and I'll only go to this one other layer, but if we think about going home, I want to say something about the devices. I've read some great articles from some schools that have de uh, deployed other than Apple technology, and they're actually proud. This statement, it's a verbatim. 60% of our students, it's the only, what we send home is the only device they have. It's the one they rely on. 40% of our students have another device at home that they use as their primary device. And I go, okay, so you're telling me 40% of your students have supplementary technology that the device you're sending home is not good enough and they have something better. That is not shrinking the digital divide. That is keeping a status quo or potentially making it worse. So that concept of what the device can do at home, if you want to do flip classroom, is it simply writing a text or are they designing something? Does it have the assistive technology capabilities? Can it work offline? Because quite frankly, if 75% whoo, of my students have high internet, that means 33 of my students wouldn't have had, and I can name their names. So I wanna make sure they have those capabilities. I know 25% of my students are dyslexic like me and need the assistive technology. Is it native? Is it built in? When we think about the people involved and we think at par about parents, I started doing one-to-one -one, uh, in the early 2000s in Maine, and somewhere around 2006, I finally convinced a school to start sending them home. Immediately, I had parents at the school board meetings wagging a finger at me. My child's coming home. <laughs> They're getting on the internet before I get home. They're doing things that I, you know, I have to have them sit at the dinner table and li literally watch them. You know? Well, I started holding classes on how to manage your home Wi-Fi. I taught them how to go knock on their neighbor's door and say, excuse me, can I help you put a passcode on your Wi-Fi? We started showing them how they could use the Apple parental controls. But I didn't have the tool like we have now where a parent can set it and say, no Safari until I get home. Or here's the six apps you need for homework and you know, go ahead and sit at the table or go up to your room like we can do today. So as IT staff, recognizing that that adds to what we need to do, but recognizing that it really supports the mission of our organization to help all students be empowered with technology. So I want to spend a couple more minutes talking about the people, because I think the stakeholders are a crucial piece. I have been to enough conferences where I've talked about bridging IT and instructional information systems, and I've had the eye rolls or the oh my goshes. I, I see it at other conferences, but I know the majority of the people here are striving to do it, even though we have challenges. We know that Central IT has been a common primary user of Jamf products. We have extended that and believe that including all stakeholders down to limited or set, and set access for certain people, certain administrators, even when I was a librarian or just an instructional, te instructional technologist. But we've expanded to teachers, students have greater access, and, and we are wanting to support the parents because getting the community behind us can really help an initiative stay an instructional initiative versus always be focused on being a technology initiative. 
And of course, our primary audience has been central and local IT. And I know many of you are similar to me that also cross into the instructional. Many of you have been every single stakeholder like I have, from the parent to the student, all the way up that chain. But what I want to say is educational technology leaders that you are, I want to emphasize that you have a focus of a vision and that when things get challenging, we focus back on that challenge and that vision. That when we are putting out fires, we recognize that we're all striving to support the overall mission of the organization. And at Jamf, we've expanded from supporting primarily the, the central IT at the console, and we're going to continue to do that in all of our product lines. We're going to continue to innovate when Apple comes out with great and new things. That will always be a focus. On the instructional side, I believe you're going to see us bringing things down to that instructional teacher or leader, and we need your help at connecting with them and hearing from them. They also need to be on Jamf Nation giving us feature requests and telling us about the needs directly in the classroom. And yes, we're also going to expand and try to continue to help at home. And what we're committed to doing is a commitment to continued self-improvement, recognizing we make mistakes and we fail fast and move on. And we want to help empower all of you to help empower all students with the best learning opportunity. Thank you very much. I'll get back to Sam. Active, personal, and equitable. It's amazing. Thank you, Salty. We call him Salty because it's his last name, not his personality, by the way, just so you're aware. This is where we're going, and now how do we get there? And for us, that means product. Do you want to talk about product today? Yes. Well, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice one thing. Our products are growing. <laughs> We've got more of them every day, it seems like. So it's a little bit confusing, but I want to make sure that we fully understand what products are extremely relevant and what we're going to talk about today that pertains to education. First, we've got, oh, sorry, Jamf Pro is obviously our enterprise grade management for all macOS devices. We've got Jamf School, which is simple, powerful, and tailored specifically for the most important K-12 needs. And of course, we've got new capabilities within Jamf Connect that we're really excited about that can help bridge your identity no matter where it lies, even if it's in Google Secure LDAP. And as it pertains to Jamf Protect, we know that this isn't extremely applicable for you in education today, but watch out. As technology grows and as it becomes a part of our lives and our fabric, we have to understand that security is one of those things that we'll have to keep a close eye on. But let's start the discussion with Jamf Pro. And to lead things in, let me welcome to the stage a 14-year veteran to higher education our product manager extraordinaire, Katie English. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. You've heard a lot about Jamf's recent recommitment to education, but we've actually been releasing innovative classroom management options and enabling Apple's own education features for years now. So I hope you'll indulge me a little bit. We're gonna go in the way back machine and take a quick stroll down memory lane. Do you remember the Casper Suite release 8.7 back in 2014? That was when we brought in Casper Focus, a revolutionary tool to help bring classroom-facing MDM functionality to teachers. Now, if we've mentioned that a few times today, it's worth bragging about. This was a big deal. We also released the SIS importer at this time. Uh, it was an automated tool to ingest data from your student information systems and create associated class times and memberships within the Casper Suite. There we go. We jump ahead a little bit to March 2014, Casper Suite version 9.3. This supported the device enrollment program and volume purchase program. That was a long time ago. Uh, the Apple and education story got even cooler. For the first time, we got device supervision over the air, uh, making IT admins' lives easier and devices more secure. 
The App Store, the major differentiator for Apple devices and instructional effectiveness, got even more accessible with user-assigned volume purchases, which meant no more spreadsheets. Does anyone remember those? Those are terrible. DEP and VPP, awesome. We're gonna jump ahead a little bit. If, you, if you're newer to Jamf, Casper Focus and SIS Importer will probably still sound pretty familiar. Fast forward a couple of years to Apple's own releases of the Classroom app and Apple School Manager, supported in Casper Suite version 9.9 .9 in March 2016. All those disparate management systems around school IT got tied closer together, and now we have the full picture of which students are in which classes, so we can deploy content to them and enhance the instructional experience. So you can see, we've been doing this for a little while. We've been innovating in education for years and iterating on Apple's own improvements time and again. Now just one year ago, we kicked off a monster effort for education in, for, in Jamf Pro at JNOC 2018 with support for Classroom on the Mac. Then came roster category enhancements on the apps, uh, from Apple School Manager, the ability to in integrate with your Google identity, and we've borrowed some brain power from our new team at Jamf School to uh, to bring, add parent app functionality to Jamf Pro. All of these workflows are designed to integrate with the tools already in your ecosystem, enabling you to support instruction more easily and giving more power to the people with the devices in their hands. In fact, you've already seen an example of that from yesterday's keynote. Do you remember what Jen Kaplan did? She actually had an app request that she sent off from self-service. So you can imagine that you're the IT admin on the other side of that app request, and Jen is the teacher who just discovered a new app to bring to her classroom. Except you don't have to imagine it, because we've got a video demonstration of it right here. So this is my computer, and I'm gonna open up my email, and I'm gonna see this app request. Came in automatically from Jamf Pro. I open it up, I can see who requested it, I can see what the app is. I can look at it in the App Store if I need to. And if I scroll down a little bit, I see those custom fields defined in Jamf Pro so I know how many devices and uh, to where it needs to be scoped. So I'm gonna flip over to Jamf Pro. Fortunately, I already have this in my apps and books tokens, so I'm just gonna go into app uh, mobile app device apps, find the app, quickly assign it to the cart that it's supposed to be deployed to. and it was cart 15. Thank you, Jen, for the information. And we hit save, it's scoped, I'm good, I'm done. I can go back into my email, I can archive that request for my later reference. So that's the back end experience of what you saw yesterday from the self-service request. App deployment is one of those overhead tasks we have to do time and time again, just like device provisioning. How many of us, and I'm raising my hand here, have suffered the endless paper cuts of unboxing hundreds, thousands of devices over the summer? I think I helped a few of you do that. Um, if you're handing a device to a student, how do you make it theirs that much more quickly? Compare a standard automated device enrollment workflow, where you join Wi-Fi, you walk through the setup assistant, hopefully you authenticated correctly along the way, you get to the springboard or the desktop, and then you wait. Self-service, bunch of apps, how long does that take? Add in a couple dozen students as more students try to enroll. How, long, how are those caching servers holding up? Instead, let's talk about Jamf Connect and some of the new opportunities it, it opens up for us. With a post-enrollment authentication workflow, you can stage your device to have everything it needs before knowing which student it'll actually be assigned to. Take any prepared device off the shelf, let the student launch Jamf Connect on iOS and authenticate, and then they get any additional content they're scoped to, they lose the bits they don't need, all while minimizing device prep during that precious start to the school year. And of course, Jamf Connect on macOS allows you to use your cloud identity provider for local account provisioning, keeping you away from those inevitable password hassles when you have to bind to a directory. Which means we've improved the provisioning experience, We've improved the day-to-day -day deployment experience with AppRequest. We've enabled new classroom and parent features for day-to-day -day instructional success. And at the end of the school year, we're ready to start all over again with those enhanced tool sets. We've got you covered through the entire device lifecycle. You've probably noticed that security is a major theme at JNUC this year. 
Security challenges in education are a little different than other enterprises, but the solutions we offer are still relevant. You still need to manage certificates with Active Directory Certificate Services or some other certificate authority. You still need to renew those certificates or revoke them if a device is compromised. Our certificate lifecycle workflows continue to evolve and we're excited to serve, them, uh, serve even more customers with them over time. You also have privacy concerns, maybe more so than other admins do, given student privacy and associated laws. We work right alongside Apple's own options for managed Apple IDs and strict developer guidelines to ensure student data is transported and stored securely. Of course, this was a big year for Apple too. They gave us a, lot, a ton of new tools this summer at WWDC, including new enrollment customizations to keep your devices on rails with acceptable use policy and identity served right out of the cloud. You've already heard a lot about those highlights, but don't forget about the account configuration MDM command keys for macOS, which will ensure that your local MDM enabled user matches the assigned one-to-one -one student account, which in turn makes EDU profile and classroom app integration for the Mac a snap. And if you've ever had trouble managing passwords on encrypted devices with mobile directories, you're gonna love bootstrap token functionality coming up in a future release of Jamf Pro. Finally, that was, that was a clap, I like that one. Uh, finally, as data and management continue their inevitable transition to the cloud, we got you covered with cloud management and identity integrations. We've already delivered significant improvements as we optimize our backend infrastructure in Jamf Cloud with Amazon scaling and database management tools. Ongoing front end refactors mean more performant day to day interactions, as well as improved in, uh, APIs for programmatic access. Our cloud teams delivered all of those optimizations, even as we've migrated hundreds more customers to the cloud so far this year alone, adding to the 65% of all of our education customers currently living in Jamf Cloud. In addition, over half of our release candidate customers are schools in the cloud, helping us ensure the continued success of your critical workflows. And it really doesn't hurt that our cloud team picked up a bunch of new expertise from our new cloud-only education-focused product in Jamf School. So here to tell us more about that is Jamf School's product strategist, Kirsten Vischer. Thank you. Well, good morning, all. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Katie. Um, so. As she said, my name is Kirsten Visser, and I'm happy to tell you a little bit about our product, actually a product brand new to the Jamf portfolio, Jamf School. Jamf School is a 100% purposely built education MDM. And um, that's really not uh, so strange because it uh, got created by the IT department of a school, the Honsrug College in the Netherlands. Right now, there are only over 60 countries, there are schools that you're using uh, Zulu-desk, Jam School. We, um, because we started up in a school, we actually also looked at the different actors, right? If you start up an MDM for uh, going one-on-one -on -one with Apple devices, you figure out that it's actually also very useful if you can work together. And this is what happened. They kind of build tools also for the other actors. And another nice thing about this is actually because coming from a school, we wanted to make it affordable also for the smaller schools. So um, you get the management portal, but you also get the apps for the same price. And I, like, I know you Americans like that, right? Toppings, add-ons, that kind of things. <laughs> so I needed to do that. <laughs> um, apart from that, our DNA is simplicity. Um, also, coming from a school uh, in the Netherlands, we have a lot of small schools there. So, if you don't have the blessing of you guys here, an IT uh, department, you actually are, as a teacher, you have to do everything yourself. So, um, we created as, or the development team created as simple workflows as possible. And I want to show you an example of that. So, here you have our setup assistant. Um, this is actually uh, an assistant that you see when you start up the first time your Gem School environment. Well, welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, but push the first certificate, of course. I just click through a little bit. How do you want to import your users? 
your DEP configurations. And then you're kind of done. Most schools are kind of up and running in 30 minutes. Gem school, yeah, that's pretty impressive, right? <laughs> but it's just the basic, right? Um, Gem school is a state of the art MDM focused on the Apple ecosystem. And yesterday, Sam showed you a little bit about it and told you a little bit about it, as well as Molly and Andrew. And um, uh, today, I want to show you also something about our management portal. So here you see the dashboard very quickly. Uh, you see how many devices you have. Uh, you can see also uh, your teachers that work with the, uh, with the system and um, the teacher app. And I'm also going to show you something about the organizations where you find your settings. Uh, that's just we're waiting. Yep. So here under your settings, you have your device uh, locations, your IS updates all that kind of things. But you also can find those apps that you get for free. Um, so clicking on a Genf teacher here, you can allow your teachers to have multiple functionalities within their own classroom. Just give them more autonomy. Of course, it has to do with the policy of your school, which is possible. And here you have the Genf parent, when you, where you also can set your time, for instance. Well, next to that, also, you have your Apple School Manager, of course, your settings. SFTP. And just a very fast click on scripting, because we're happy that we can also give that for you on your macOS. So I also want to show you the profile section. So if you click on that, you, have, you can have your uh, different profiles. And here I'm going to show you the layout of a profile, because it's kind of nice. You can just pick up your apps and get that into your iPad. <laughs> you like that, guys? <laughs> Very nice. I like that, too. And just another geeky thing, maybe, a wallpaper. We're getting into the holiday season, right? Everything is nice. Just spice it up a little bit and get another picture to your devices. A little text in there, maybe. Yep. <laughs> so if you all still need help, which is, of course, possible for things that happen on, along the road, we also have a support button there, just in the product, where you can go to. We have our FAQ, frequently asked questions. You can uh, create a ticket in there and connect to the um, developers. And also, uh, you can ask for a um, chat. So with zero-day support uh, on Apple deployment, you can actually uh, manage your, all your Apple devices, iOS, um, iPadOS, uh, macOS, and your tvOS. In this uh, very short time frame, I just wanted to show you something uh, of the management portal. But actually, this afternoon at 1.30 in the Lakeshore room, yes, downstairs, um, the developers will also be there and uh, can show you something about our roadmap, but also some of the other cool features um, that we created this year. And uh, go a little bit deeper into that, and you can have also questions um, an answer. So, hope you join us there. Hey, Katie, you're already there, right? <laughs> I'm not done. I'm not done. I stay here. <laughs> but thanks. Hi. So, uh, Gem Pro and School, um, we're a match made in heaven, right? We're a bunch <laughs> of smart people making each other smarter. Uh, I was going to put in a joke here about peanut butter and jelly, but apparently they don't eat that in the Netherlands. So, uh, well, not me. Im <laughs> imagine that it's just uh, yeah. a lot of awesome people being smart together. Um, we've had the opportunity to combine forces and do a lot of cool things. Uh, of course, beyond the a uh, admin console, beyond the admins clicking away, uh, is the e app ecosystem. And you're all really familiar with self-service at this point, but Jamf School brought even more to the party. So the apps from Jamf School, get back one. <laughs> uh, the apps from Jamf School, we're going to talk about them as far as a demo here. Yep, there you go. 
Yeah, okay, here we go. We're doing the teacher <laughs> app. All right, it goes very fast. Shall I go fast for you? Okay, now, so the teacher app um, is something that you can use. I just showed you a little bit on the background, but you don't have to use. It's all about empowering your teachers, right? Um, so the app is a companion to the Apple Classroom app, um, augmenting Apple's workflows. Like Molly and Andrew showed you yesterday, this is actually um, pretty cool if you can prepare your lesson as a teacher and um, be very quick, right? Uh, show or send some text messages, but also um, you can, um, um, you know, lock multiple apps. Another cool feature is actually that you can extend your classroom because it is on Wi-Fi technology. So it means that you can also uh, manage the devices when, you're, when the student is now really close to you. Let me see. So I think I have to go a, bit, a little bit. Yeah, OK. No, I don't. So um, like Katie just told you uh, about um, the fact that we inspire each other, um, right? The Genf uh, school team also got inspired by the development team of Genf Pro. And an example of that is the um, app request video. And I'm going to show that right now to you. Yes, it works. Go to the App Store, <laughs> find your app, like here, and then you can send the link and share it with your teacher app. Here you go. The teacher app will ask you in what kind of class that this uh, needs to be, um, uh, app needs to be going, and what kind of teacher uh, class um, students need it. And of course, you also need to send out why you need it, because someone needs to approve it, right? So under the background, uh, in the background, the, the system actually checks whether this app is already there or not, um, and that helps you. I think we're doing that a little bit again. So nice. You also get a notification that it's approved or denied. And if you go to your app request in your teacher app, you can also see uh, what your requests are, if they are denied or not. So let's do that a little bit again. Just another app that you can show. And this afternoon, actually, they're going to show the back, uh, back end of that, which is pretty cool. Really nice. So here again, um, send it over. Tell which students, which class, and also that you really need this one. Otherwise, yeah. Send it over. You have immediately that you see that it's actually working. So yeah, I know that I send it over. And then um, let's hope it got proved. Waiting on a notification. No, there it is. There it is, and of course it got denied. That happens too, right? <laughs> so again, in your uh, app request, you can see which one is. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, Katie, did you want to say something about the ad hoc screen? Absolutely. Ad hoc classroom? Yeah, so you've already seen some of these workflows already. Can I give it to you? Thank you. Yep. Uh, you've already seen some of these workflows. We're going to actually uh, run through a couple more here. Uh, we're going to launch Teacher App. So, that's Teacher on the left and Student on the right. Teacher App launches. We're going to look at a class. And in this case, we're not going to pay attention to the whole class. We're paying attention to Riley, who's in the back of the class and, and may be struggling a little bit. Riley needs to work on math. So we're going to actually dynamically uh, uh, whitelist just some math apps for the duration of the math class. Here we go. We're just going to select a few. And we'll send them over. And basically, instantaneously, we're setting a two-minute class. It's a really short attention span there. So um, we'll send it over. and. Pretty much immediately, the iPad yep. on the right is nice, right? Uh, dynamically <laughs> whitelisted to just those apps. Yep. And of course, we can clear those restrictions immediately and re return the device to full functionality. And that's coming up right here. Any second now, I will click the restrictions. <laughs> there we go. There you go. There's restrictions. We'll clear it back, and the device is back to normal functionality. So. Uh, the other thing that's super cool about Teacher is attention. that we can actually send an attention, attention screen. screen. Because the, uh, the students are sometimes really not wanting to listen, kind of what, or doing something else. And then you just go inside 
um, that app and just say. Yep. So we can just kind of get in their way nice for a Nice thing. Yeah. You like that? Okay. Well, it's nice that you can send a message with that as well, right? And just to one student or to multiple students, yeah. also possible. All right. Besides Wi Fi, what has been a big theme at JNAC this year? Identity. Yes. That was a hint. <laughs> it wasn't actually a quiz. So, uh, yeah. So, Gem School also helps with that. Yep. Um, uh, we wanted to help uh, sharing the tasks that you guys uh, as a T have. And what is a nicer way to let the teachers do it for you? Yep. Right? Cool. So, we'll yeah. Launch teacher app here. <laughs> so, here uh, you see the teacher app. Um, we're going inside the classes that Katie just showed you as well. And here you see that, uh, I don't know, Riley. what the name is, is Riley. <laughs> you can edit this picture yourself. Katie's cat, by the way. She's a terrible student. <laughs> we edit the picture. We can uh, edit it a bit and then say, yeah, this is the one we actually need. And then you can see that also in your teacher app. And now that's kind of cool, but what is actually more cool, that's that we send it to Apple School Manager directly. So if it's in the Apple School Manager, it means that it's also in the Classroom app of Apple. There you go. That is pretty cool. <laughs> Are you jealous now, Katie? I'm a little jealous. <laughs> okay. We're getting there, though. <laughs> All right. So power to the teachers. Power right? to the teachers. Yep. Currently in Jamf School, coming soon in 2020 to Jamf Pro. Right. <laughs> yes. This one, we've gotten both products, though. You may have already seen it. It's the Jamf Parent app. We released it over the summer. When Zulu Desk joined the Jamf family, we had a new opportunity for collaboration and growth, building Jamf School and amplifying the power of Jamf Pro. The Parent app was already a key feature of Zulu Desk. And deploying it this summer has been uh, a rousing success. Yeah, so kind of at the end of the day, we all have our div digital lives at home. And um, parents like to also guide their children making homework or even restrict them for a time, time period in games, for instance, playing that. And you actually empower them to do that with the teacher of the parent app, of course. Yep. What did I say was an important theme this year? Identity. Mm -hmm. And what could be harder than managing the identity of people who aren't even in your organization? Families are complicated, and we can't always predict them. So we decided to eliminate some of those challenges with this particular workflow, and it's using a QR code to actually pair a parent app to a managed device. So we're going to show that. First, this is the parent app on the right. Yep. And we're just going to go through a basic restriction right here. We've got, this is Casey Davis's uh, iPad right here, and maybe it's homework time. So we're going to actually just restrict some device functionality on Casey's device, and we're just going to turn off some of the, the uh, media apps, things like camera and messages, FaceTime. We're just going to turn those off, and Casey, uh, holding this device, is noticing that those apps disappear from the springboard. When we're done, we can turn them back on. Casey's device is managed in Jamf School. But what if we had another device managed <laughs> in Jamf Pro? Yep. I'm going to launch self-service and totally not have problems with Wi-Fi. <laughs> and then I'm going to click the, the button to yep. generate a QR code. That's in self-service generated per device on the fly. On the right, I hit plus to add a new device and scan the QR code. I scan it, and just that quick, these two devices are paired together in the parent app. And now I see Casey, and I will also see, I think, Kaylee. Hopefully, yeah, there we go, Kaylee. Awesome. <laughs> Both it's, the it's, same parent app, right? Yep, it's homework yep. time for Kaylee, too. We're going to yep. go in, and we're going to turn off camera, messages, FaceTime. Yep. And those apps are immediately disappearing off of the managed pro device on the left. When homework time is over, we remove those restrictions return the device uh, back to its full functionality. And I, the parent, don't have to know whether Jamf School or Jamf Pro is managing the back-end device. They should both show up in my dashboard, yep. and I can do them both the same, which I think Pretty is... Pretty cool for the de uh, development team, I think. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Yep. 
And there we go. So, yeah, sorry, yeah. Say. Well, we continue to uh, improve our solutions together, uh, the pro and the school uh, team, of course, uh, in companion uh, alongside with Apple. And um, yeah, well, I hope to see you next JNUG. Yeah, thank Sam, you. Sam, back to you. Thank you. Two great MDMs, two great apps, one common purpose helping you both enable your students and teachers and helping you prepare for the school year ahead. Now, some have asked us the question, hey, why, why do you have two MDMs for education? And uh, well, it's an unfair question because we have two MDMs for commercial as well. We have Jamf Now and Jamf Pro. And the simple answer is that we don't want to sacrifice complexity versus simplicity, because we know that your needs out there are, matter more than either of those. And we want to be adaptable to your needs. So simply put, we want to have an MDM for any school of any size and complexity, and that's why we have two. But some of you might be asking yourselves, which one is right for me? Or maybe uh, you're asking for a friend, which one is right for them? And so I want to be as clear as possible about the advantages of both of these so that you can understand uh, what's the difference. Starting with Jamf School, it has workflows that are specifically designed for the most important educational needs. It's, up, it's, it's got a great ability to get up and started very quickly, as you saw, and it's very powerful if you have iPad-centric deployments within your district. Jamf Pro, on the other hand, has a very extensible framework that adapts to the workflows that you want to create. It has proven scalability, both in the volume, but also in the complexity of the, the deployments that you have. And it is very powerful when you have all Apple operating systems deployed in your environment. So hopefully that clears things up, but to add more clarity to it, I want to talk about these both together and what we will commit to you moving forward. And that is, first, we're going to continue development on both MDMs and make sure that they're both focused for education moving forward. We're going to take pride and continue to make sure that day zero support for Apple systems is front and center for both MDMs as well. And we're going to make sure that the apps that we use and the, the things that we can learn from one another are, are brought to both platforms. And we think that that's going to help drive both of these together. And it's going to, two brains are better than one. And we're going to learn a lot and be able to propel both products into the future. So I hope that's clear. I hope it was clear in the, in the showcase and the explanation of the two products where these two sit. But in all that clarity, sometimes it just isn't as clear. And out of the 19,000 customers that we have using an MDM, there's a few out there that are actually using both Jamf School and Jamf Pro to manage their devices. And one of them has a pretty interesting story. So I've asked him to come and, and talk to us about it. So I'd like to welcome to the stage from Eanes Independent School District, their Director of Technology Services, and fifth grade tetherball champion, Chris Miller. Thank you for joining us, Chris. So first and foremost, just tell us a little bit about how you came about using both Jamf School and Jamf Pro in your environment. Absolutely, so we're, we're a mature one-to-one. -one. We're an all Apple ecosystem at Eanes. K through 12, uh, Apple TVs, Macs, iPads. And, you know, and what we started realizing very, you know, kind of recently is that with feedback from instruction and looking at our parents, that we needed to kind of, kind of pause and kind of refresh and renew some of, some of what we were trying to achieve and, and do some things differently. And it, we wanted to do a reboot with K5. And we wanted kind of a fresh start and, and a clean ecosystem. And Jamf School was a very good fit for that. 
we were, you know, it, it, you know the simplicity, the, the K-12, the, you know, the educational focus, but we also had some very powerful features that puts some of the controls back into the classroom for teachers to really instructionally focus the device. Additionally, we've, we had some features in there that increased transparency and allowed parents to control school devices at home in a way that resonates with their values. So it was pretty, it's a pretty good fit for us. Nice. Yeah. And so when, when looking at that and making this decision, one of the hardest things that a lot of schools look at is the migration from one MDM to the other. Uh, can you tell us about the process of how you got migrated from the existing devices that were in Jamf Pro over to Jamf School? Right. It's super simple. We migrated about three to 4,000 devices in a month. Now, I've got a, a very small but a very great team. Uh, but what we found was that we didn't have to, I didn't have to bring my team members up to speed on Jamf School, it, it was just, it was intuitive. It was quick and easy to do. The other thing that was awesome, and a shout out to the Jamf School team and Patrick for staying with me the whole way, but I got the support to get me over those hurdles. So in, basically we had really three weeks in July to get it done, and we got it done. Wow, wow. Now you mentioned that some of, some of this came from, from pressures to have more applications in the hands of the teachers and mm -hmm. the parents right now. Uh, so, have you been able to get any of those, those apps deployed and have you had any use cases or anything with, with the teacher app or the parent app? Absolutely. I was really surprised. Uh, in the Jamf School dashboard, you can see when the teachers are using or how frequently they're using the, uh, the, the teacher app. And so, I discovered early on that teachers were using the, the teacher app when I hadn't even told them about it. It was on the iPad and so it stopped by that classroom, hey, what are you doing? And, and okay, well, have you looked at this? And that was it. That was the extent of the training. Uh, the, the other popular app, of course, is the parent app because it, it resonates with the values and the concerns that the parents of our community wanted. And the funny thing about that was in testing it on my own iPad, my wife saw me setting it up. And then when I left the room, she, she went and scanned my QR code. And she wants me to thank you personally for being able to control my iPad. And I want to let you know it's very effective. <laughs> Yeah, we could have, that, that could have been an opportunity for a naming change, right? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jamf Spouse coming next year. It's not a, it's not a release, yeah. but yeah. yeah. It, sounds, it sounds like you have a lot of very just active participation from your community. Uh, how, do you, how do you facilitate some of that feedback? And this isn't related to an MDM or anything, mm -hmm. but how do you get uh, the voice of parents and teachers and the community into your district? You know, that, that's really the, the important struggle is to, to maintain and gather that information, to have eyes in the classroom, to be present in the classroom, but also to talk to parents directly, to listen to their concerns. We do that in a variety of ways with focus groups, with committees, but also just parent feedback and fielding a lot of emails and calls. And so the features that you put into the teacher app have really resonated with some of the, the asks that I've had or have received from parents for the, all the time that I've done this over the years. Wow. Cool. Well, Chris is on uh, Mac Admin's podcast. He's, he's out there in the community. Uh, he's a great resource for knowledge, and, and uh, I encourage you to, to approach him. He's actually going to be up here in just a little bit when we get to some of our partner solutions. Chris, one more question. Do you have any plans now that we, we've got some of the app uh, features across both MDMs? Do you have any plans to move all the way to one or the other MDM as you I, move forward? I really don't. Managing two systems has not been overly cumbersome. So Jamf School is a great fit for K-5 and the values and what we're trying to achieve there. Jamf Pro has the extensibility and the granularity for us to really fit our needs for secondary as well as managing our Macs. And then our Apple TV and Carousel partnership is supported very well in the Jamf Pro environment. Excellent, excellent. Well, speaking of Carousel, we're going to keep this boat mov moving. And Chris is actually going to be up here in just a second. Uh, but before he comes back up, we are going to introduce... You, you can either stay or come, Chris. You're gonna, you might as well just take a seat back here because, like I said, you're going to be up here a little bit more. Uh, but as, as strong as our solutions can be on our own, we know that they have to exist within the ecosystem with strength as well. And that means the connection that we have to the partners that you're working with today. And we've got some really exciting partnerships that we want to showcase for you today. And to, bring, to tell you more about our programs, I'd like to bring up Sam, who's our Solutions Partner Program Manager, to tell you about this program. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. Good morning, everyone. 
My name is Sam Weiss, and I'm the Solution Partner Manager at Jamf, and it's an incredible honor to be up here with you all. It's been a great two days, technically start of day two, at JNUC so far, and you've heard a lot about our exciting products. You've heard about Now, you've heard about School, you've heard about Pro and Connect, as well as Protect. But there, and hopefully what you've realized is there are Jamf solutions for organizations of any size and any type. But we also realize something very important, is that in the realm of everything that you do, working inside Jamf to manage Apple devices might just be a fraction of your day-to-day -day activities. And the number of tools and services that IT is expected to support in education is up 43% compared to the last five years. And just the tip of the iceberg, right? We've got security, identity, infrastructure, digital signage, telephony, backup, student information systems, assessment tools, digital portfolios. That's just a little bit of the tech stack that we're expected to manage within education in IT. And at Jamf, we realized this a long time ago, and we've embraced this mentality of what we call Jamf and. And that means Jamf and literally whatever tools you rely on day to day to do your jobs. So if there's an opportunity to integrate products to extend the use of Jamf into never before seen places, solve problems in ways we've never considered, or most importantly to us, simplifying a process for admins or end users, we want to create tools that make that possible. And at the end of the day, there are just some problems out there that Jamf cannot solve all on its own. And that's where our developer tools come in. We encourage developers to support the native Apple experience and then offer integration and customizations through our developer tools, like our API, webhooks, and our advanced support of app configuration. For those of you unfamiliar with those concepts, our API lets you programmatically interact with Jamf Pro. Webhooks can fire messages to third-party systems to kick off workflows or to inform a process in a different system. And App Config is my personal favorite because it allows you to modify the look and the feel and the use of standard apps that you get through the App Store. In integrating your separate systems or to have an app or a service that takes full advantage of API-driven device management can be a super powerful way to increase your efficiency or to provide a better end user experience. And if you're interested in learning more about these developer tools, you've chosen the right year to come to JNUC because we have more sessions and labs about your ability to extend the Jamf platform than ever before, as well as excellent examples of districts and enterprises that have built tools that fill their specific needs. Um, if these are not on your list to go check out, I highly encourage it. And it's not just our end users building these integrations. There's a growing ecosystem of third-party developers that embrace these same tools for the benefit of our Jamf admins and end users. And the ones that you see on the screen have joined us at JNUC not to just share what they've created, but why they see value in extending the Jamf management framework. And as a reminder, you don't have to wait for JNUC every year to learn about these new integrations and app vendors that take advantage of Jamf managed deployments. The Jamf Marketplace is home to all of these, as well as consultants. And it is so hard to keep this slide up to date because we are now at just over 300 listings within the Jamf Marketplace, and we're extremely proud of that. As a reminder, the Marketplace was released two JNUX ago, and we're excited to see sustained interest, not just from our end users, but developers. On any given day, we have one to 200 unique visitors to the Jamf Marketplace, and we add a handful of integrations and partners every single month. And those visitors have discovered solutions that extend Jamf in interesting ways over 100,000 times. And today, we're really excited to talk about two of these solutions. The first is a digital signage partner that has embraced not just Apple TV, but the Jamf developer tools as well to offer a very tightly integrated solution. So with that, I'd like to welcome to the stage Eric Henry from Carousel Digital Signage and Chris from Means. All right. Thanks, Sam. Excellent. Yeah, it's been great to kind of go down memory lane here. Uh, I remember my fa first JNUC actually three years ago, and as Salty shared uh, his reaction, I remember my first JNUC and thinking, these people are really passionate about education. And ultimately, at the end of the day, they're all about people. And we really wanted to be part of that. And so fast forwarding a few years, and actually the reason why we came to JNUC the first time was because Apple decided they were going to manage tvOS devices, which opened a whole new world. 
And so, pretty excited to be here. Quick question, how many of you out here have digital signage deployed within your schools? Chris, raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, that's awesome. So obviously, traditionally, you've seen digital signage in lobbies, in hallways, in cafeterias sometimes, maybe even the media center. And given our mission to help organizations communicate effectively where people gather, we really wanted to reach into the classroom. Because ultimately, in schools, that's where the people gather the most. And traditionally, that's just been almost an impossible dream for us. Given the cost of the media players traditionally, given how do you manage all of these devices and deploy them at scale, it's just never been attainable. But now, with Jamf and Apple, and the Apple TV, it is now a reality to actually reach all the way into the classroom with digital signage, utilizing a device you've already made an investment in for other purposes to communicate effectively with students. And the district that's been doing that in really cool new ways is, is EANS, and we have Chris here to kind of walk us through a little bit of what you guys are doing. So if you would, just kind of step us through a little bit what you guys are doing at EANS. Yeah, so we, we've got a, a pretty typical standard classrooms. We've got some uh, dusty old projectors. We've got some CRTs lurking around. Um, you know, we're actually in the process of upgrading to interactive flat panels across our, our rooms. But the one thing that we have in common in all of our classrooms and all our displays is there's an Apple TV on each of those. And, the, and to proceed kind of with that vision in each of these classrooms, we've got digital signage running passively in the background. Excellent. And that's really important, particularly in the, in the passing periods. But what we found is that with that, students are able to absorb the information because the display is a focal point in the classroom. Now, when the class starts, the teacher simply airplays to share the instructional content with the class. Both teachers and students can interact with the display through the Apple TV. The signage seamlessly disappears into the background to let teaching and learning happen. Okay, so, uh, you know, if an urgent message gets triggered from the school, it, Carousel has that app, the ability to handle that as well. Um, say the principal triggers a message, AirPlay is disabled, and a visual message appears on the screen for all to see. Now, Chris, is that the example of the type of urgent message you guys would have down in Texas? Well, okay, so chicken fried steak messages and lobster is definitely going to be something that would come up in my office, but it could be anything. It could be anything from a fire drill to skunks on the playground. Important information you want to alert teachers and kids about. And that's more what I guess I was expecting. That makes total sense. Yeah. So. Um, the, the cool thing is once the, once the issue has been resolved where I've eaten the chicken fried steak, uh, message uh, dis disappears from the screen, and everything goes back to normal as far as the classroom is concerned with teaching and learning. Yeah, that's really cool. So now that we have the basics, can you walk us through how Apple, Jamf, and Carousel combine to make the solution happen? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so my job is to make sure that all these Apple TVs get deployed and configured correctly. And, uh, you know, setting up a couple is not a, not a big deal. You're doing a lot of clicks and that kind of thing. But when you scale up to hundreds or even thousands, it, be, it becomes tough. And with Jamf, we're able to have them all enroll and automatically be configured as signage appliances without me doing much work. Yeah, and we call that shrink wrap to signage. So believe it or not, uh, we talk about all this no paper cut stuff. We heard that a little bit earlier. Even today, even today, actually deploying digital signage requires you to unbox every single unit, configure it manually right there, and do that over and over and over and over again, unless it's an Apple TV. You know, Eric, as, as I was saying, once we power up the Apple TV, it automatically provisions itself as a classroom signage appliance. That's cool. And so we got, just kind of do a walkthrough, you know, connect it to power, plug it in, it does its thing, Phone's home, configuration profiles drop, the app drops, and then the spinning happens, the magic happens, and then boom, signage is there. Man, I just love watching that. It's pretty easy, it's cool. So once these Apple TV media players come online, Carousel starts displaying one of those beautifully designed channels that we have down at Eans. Right, the, the, the next part of that is to make sure that people can get in and make content in the carousel CMS. 
Absolutely, because what we believe is the most important thing to ensure success at digital signage is keeping the content fresh. That means that teachers and admins, they've got to be able to get in quickly, and they have to easily be able to create the types of messages that need to go on those screens, because it's really not their primary job. And the nice thing about that is, is Carousel has enterprise class features like single sign-on, which makes it easy to give access to the signage CMS. In fact, there's, to go along with that, there's some awesome online training you can also grant access to to get my colleagues up to speed on Carousel so I'm not fielded with a bunch of phone calls and, and, and requests for additional training and support. Hmm. So Chris, what would you say you actually do at Eans? That's a good question. Actually, before you answer that, is anybody back home watching? I don't know. No? OK, cool. Excellent. So exactly, I mean, keeping with that, for, for our teachers, this entire workflow is really seamless. With, with Jamf, we can dial in who can airplay into what display. The technology friction is really low. Teachers can focus on what they do best, which is teaching and learning, and the technology just disappears. Oh, that is such a powerful statement. Support the teachers in what they do best, and that is teach. Exactly. And if there's an urgent message? One that's like not chicken fried something related? Maybe. Maybe. maybe not. Or yeah. skunks. <laughs> in fact, what we, uh, we partnered with the I Love You Guys Foundation to bring their standard response protocols to digital signage in the classrooms in a powerful way that emphasizes safety. Here we've got some examples. Uh, if there's an actual event, the administrators can use our district-wide alert system to trigger alert bulletins through a district integration with Carousel and Jamf to override the airplay sessions in the classroom and to show these critical messages. To me, this is where it becomes extremely powerful. We can display a message on the screen listening to the district's alert system and put that out there for the duration of the event. And the message, it's simple, it's powerful, it's persistent, it's visual. And that's exactly what you want in those types of situations. And then, as I said, once the event is resolved, everything can go back to normal in the classroom and we can get folks back on learning. Excellent. All right, thanks, Chris. Uh, so excited about Apple TV, Jamf, Carousel, the content from the I Love You Guys Foundation. It really is a powerful story. And we're excited about what Chris is doing at Eans and working with Jamf and Apple to continue innovating the way that we communicate with students in schools. And we're really excited about the future together. So thank you. Thanks. And we've got Desmos. this thing on. Cool. Um, if you joined us at JNUC last year, you heard about Sawanica Central High School District, which was using the GeoGebra app to do really amazing things instructionally and on assessments. And uh, if you didn't catch the session yesterday, they did a recap. Um, definitely check out that recording. But we're excited to take calculator excellence to the next level. And this year, I'm very excited to introduce Eli, the CEO from Desmos, to join me on stage. Thank you, Sam, and also thank you, Sam, and also I assume thank you all of the other dozens of Sams at Jamf, as far as I can tell. Um, I'm Eli Lubaroff, I'm the CEO of Desmos, and so excited to be here this morning. Uh, so first, a quick question. Um, so this is, you were asked before who here uses digital signage. I'm gonna ask one that I think is an even easier question of who here has ever used a calculator? There we go, who here has ever done math? Awesome, I love it. Who here has had to buy a $100 plus calculator for one of your kids? And who here was kind of frustrated by that? Um, awesome, you're not alone. So uh, I'm Eli and about eight years ago founded this company Desmos by accident as many companies are founded. I was a tutor and I volunteer tutored in the New Haven Public Schools and I paid my way through college by tutoring in the Westport um, the Westport schools, and it was a very, very different demographic. But the one thing that I noticed that was in common is that all of them were still expected to buy the same calculator that I used when I was in middle school and high school. And full transparency, I loved that calculator. I actually learned how to program on that calculator, and the irony is not lost on me. But the fact that 20 years later, that's still the way that students are interacting with math, and it still costs $100 when we've got incredible devices in every student's pocket, was kind of astonishing to me. But the other factor is that there was a huge equity gap 
where that's a really prohibitive expense for a lot of students. And we heard from Dave earlier about how important equity is to Jamf, and it's equally important to Desmos. We want every student to have access to math. So here is what Desmos is. Um, fundamentally, uh, our main product is that we are this graphing calculator. And it's a graphing calculator that works on any device for free. If you have a phone, you can use it on there. If you're on a um, computer, you can use it on there. And of course, if you're on an iPad, you can use it on there. So we released this about eight years ago um, and expected students to use it to graph. And instead, what we saw them doing, well, I guess in addition, what we saw them doing just blew our minds, where they were getting wildly engaged with using this tool, um, which goes back to this other idea of Dave's earlier about we want students to be engaged in the learning. We want them to be the creators. And here's the kinds of things that students are creating on Desmos. And this is happening about 10,000 times a day where a teacher will give an assignment and they say, draw your favorite cartoon character using conic sections and you end up with incredible pictures like this. To give you a sense of scale, um, every single day, students are using Desmos for about a million hours um, around the world. Um, and a lot of it is graphing parabolas and some of it is drawing the logo for the bucks. So what is Desmos? <laughs> yeah, go bucks. Um, so our goal here at Desmos is that we want to help every student learn math and love learning math, which sounds really similar to the, to the Jamf one, except we're focused on math. And this every student is a really, really important goal to us. Um, one of the primary areas of focus for us, which we're getting to stand on these unbelievably broad and tall shoulders of organizations like Apple and Jamf, is around accessibility, especially for vision impaired and blind students. So we actually have a blind programmer on our team who leads our accessibility efforts named Steve, and he has been working to make sure over the last year with a team um, that every single thing that a sighted user can do on Desmos, a user with a disability can do as well. And we can see here a picture of a student who's blind using Desmos to complete the graphing questions on his Algebra 1 final. And it's tweets like this that just light me up. So Desmos is, of course, WCAG 2.1 compatible at the AA level. Who here loves WCAG? That's what I'm talking about. We've got text-to-speech. We support reverse contrast. We support Braille, refreshable Braille displays. We can play graphs as sound so that you can hear the shape of a curve. This idea of every student, thank you. Uh, this idea of every student, and especially a focus on accessibility, is one that we share with Jamf, is one that we share with Apple. Um, they do such incredible work, both of those organizations, and we get to stand on their shoulders. Okay, so let's look at some stats about Desmos. We've been around for eight years. Uh, we're now used in over 200 countries, 35 languages, uh, over 40 million people using us every year. But we're also built into 30 state tests. Oh, this is a little vanity graph that I kind of like, where you can see search interest on Google. I have no idea what the vertical scale is. Google will never tell. But uh, you can see where Desmos emerges in 2011, and you can start to see a decline in interest in handheld single-purpose graphing calculators. Let's divert all of that budget into buying iPads, yeah? Um, and so here we can see this decline, and in fact, uh, internal reports that we've heard is that Texas Instruments is losing um, over $100 million in sales as a result of this change. Very, very exciting. Uh, for that, and let's dive a little bit deeper into assessments. So we now have over 30 state tests where Desmos is actually built into the test at the end of the year. And so this means when you go to take it, you can use the same tool that you practiced with. We're also built into the digital ACT and the digital SAT and the MAP exam from NWEA and the International Baccalaureate. Um, in Texas, you're allowed to use Desmos uh, alongside the paper exam, which was actually pioneered by EANS, by Chris Miller and his group at EANS. Um, so, what is the number one request that we've been hearing as a result of this traction? Well, the number one request is folks say, outside of the digitally delivered exam, I want students to be able to use the exact same calculator. I don't want to have to buy them single purpose uh, device. And in particular, I want to be able to use it in a way that I can trust, in a way that's secure, and in a way that is configured. And so this was a request that we heard frequently, and our answer was, that sounds like a really hard problem. Like, managing a whole bunch of devices at scale seems really hard if only there was an incredible company with 1,000 employees that just focused on that. And sure enough, ran into Sam, and together we've been building this integration uh, that you will be the first people to see outside of our organization. Should we dive into it? Let's do it. All right. 
so it is time for a demo. We're going to switch over to this. Um, if the Wi-Fi is trouble, I'm going to ask all of you to turn off your phones, classic Steve Jobs style. But we're going to try. So can you see the iPad here? Awesome. We've got an app called Test Mode. This is another free app that you can download onto your phones and onto your tablets. And let's open it up. And the first thing that you can do is choose between the different calculators. But what you can do is not just choose, I want to do the graphing calculator, but I want to do the exact version of the graphing calculator that shows up on any one of these state level or national level exams. So we're going to say maybe we want to do exactly what Kentucky is doing. We want to open up the high school version of this calculator, which is the graphing calculator configured exactly to the Kentucky exam. And we're just going to practice. And so here is the Desmos calculator. And let's use it to do some graphing. Has anyone in this room actually ever seen Desmos before? We got a few. I love that. Um, so I'm going to graph an equation by just typing y equals x squared. And that's all it takes. I've got a parabola showing up on this screen. And I can zoom in and I can zoom out just by pinching because we're on an iPad. How fun is this? I can click this. I can trace it to get all of these values. Do you remember how many clicks you had to do to get that? Yeah, none of that anymore. Let's graph another equation. We can do something like y equals x plus 3. And now we've got this one, and we can find the point of intersection between these two curves. And everything just updates as you use it. And it's telling me that I'm using the Kentucky version. We can see that in the corner. I can see that I'm using it in this insecure practice mode. And finally, I can look at this, and I can leave the app altogether and enter a different calculator. So this is amazing for practice and for low stakes usage. But the thing that we want to be able to do is have students just isolated to this app so that we can use it with confidence in a high stakes or low stakes environment. And we also don't want the student to have to go in and pick Kentucky or Iowa and the graphing calculator. We want to just send out that that's what they're using. And so Sam was the one who introduced me to app config as kind of the perfect way to do this. And I know I'm not allowed to talk about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because those are not universal food, but I'm going to anyway because this is the peanut butter and jelly sandwich of using calculators securely in a classroom. So for that, I want to hand it over to Sam to show what it looks like when we use app config to lock students into exactly the calculator you want them to use. Excellent. Thank you. So um, as you've seen, what we're working with right now is the Desmos test mode app came straight from the App Store. It is not a custom app. It is not written in any special way for any particular institution. And in Jamf Pro, if we were to jump into the mobile device app record, we have this app configuration button. And for those of you that have used Jamf Pro, you probably popped into this just once to set up self-service and have never checked back. Um, we actually have really great ways to use app configs now. So what the team at Desmos did, and we were very proud of this, is they created an app config generator. And what this will do, uh, we're going to here set up this calculator to work with the Texas star. We're going to put in some uh, custom information here. So this is going to be the EANS calculator. The security tag is going to be managed in single app mode by Jamf. We can give it a header color. And when you are done, See your teacher. We are then able to, on the fly, grab an app config. We can drop it <laughs> into the app config record. And it worked instantly. So we now have a secure testing exam that meets our state requirements. They say to never do a live demo, but when I've got someone like Sam on stage, how can I resist? So that actually happened live. That is how quick it is to send out this configuration. And you can see we've got the EANS color for the header bar here so that you can just, at a glance, look around the classroom, and you can know for sure that students are using the managed version of this app. And now this is in a much more secure mode than what we had. Um, so for one thing, the features are going to be exactly as you configured them. If, for example, in Texas, they decided that they don't want to support the graphing of implicit equations, then they will not work inside of this app. That's not a feature that is available. You can also, as a proctor, have students press this Done button, and it's going to show you, managed by 
uh, Jamf. We can see it's a single app mode managed by Jamf, and it will also show you how long the student has been using it. So this has been used securely for a full minute. You can know if a student leaves, if they come back, if they're using the exact iPads that you wanted them to. This is a way that you can run exactly the calculator you want with pure confidence, and look at how easy it was to get that set up. Huge credit for that, by the way, to the team at Jamf. Our engineering team is unbelievably picky and hates every API that they've ever encountered and generally thinks that when they're working with another tech team, they're garbage. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this. <laughs> and I've heard nothing but praise from everyone who's been involved in this with the support from the Jamf team and with the technology on the Jamf side. So it's those shoulders that we get to stand on when building this kind of incredible experience. Excellent. Uh, you've seen this in Jamf Pro. But app config is supported in Jamf School as well. So regardless of your education MDM, you can experience this in your school as well. Uh, we're really excited about what our partners are doing with API webhooks and app config. And we hope to bring even more incredible stories to you in the future. So Eli, thank you so much. And we'll bring Sam back on stage. Thanks. One last thing, if you'd like to learn more about Desmos, um, Eli will be around, but you can also find Desmos on the Jamf Marketplace. Uh, the product that you just saw is in private beta right now, but there is an email address on that page to get your district access to this tool. Thank you very much. Wow, I haven't seen that much excitement around a calculator in, well, <laughs> ever. <laughs> And it turns out, if you're ever making a keynote uh, presentation, just end up following around Chris for a few months and see what he's up to, and you'll have more than enough content. So <laughs> to wind things down here, I want to introduce a concept which, which we use often in Jamf, and it's, it's the concept of the whole product experience. And what that means to us is that the, the software that we create is only a part of our product. It's only a part of the solution. And the ones and zeros that fly across our screens are incomplete unless we look at it in the context of how we enable ourselves. And what you just saw is, is the way that we enable that through our ecosystem and the connections that we have to all the partners that we work with. It's vitally important to make sure that you get what you need out of a product. And internally within Jamf, we know that we have to provide industry-leading support to help you with the hurdles that come in your way in every situation to get to that solution that you need. And we have to have services available for you to be able to get to where you want to go faster if that's what you desire. We have to have the training available to you so that you can personally become better and attain new reaches with your own capabilities. Now, speaking of training, we've got some exciting news. Uh, last year, we released our online training catalog, and it only had a couple of videos out there. Well, since then, we've released over 100 videos onto the training catalog. It's got over 15 different lesson plans that you can go through or playlists of content that give you value. It's created for Jamf Pro, Jamf School, and Jamf Connect, so it's got all of our product classes. And I'm excited to announce that today, it's available to all customers, free of charge. Go to trainingcatalog.jamf.com. And if you're interested, stop down to the, the CX lab on floor two. They, they can give you much more information about the content that, that's there. We also know that the 200 and the 300 and the 400 courses have become the standard for management training, for instructor-led training out there. And we know how important it is for you to dedicate your time, not to things uh, that come up during the given day, but to be in a classroom and learn the products right in front of you. And that's why we're excited to announce that starting today, we've got new education pricing on all of our training courses. You get 20% off every course. And if you happen to have a team of people that need to get trained and up to speed, we've got you covered here as well. So now, until the end of the year, we're going to give you 20% off the training pass as well. So go get trained. <laughs> and the last part of our whole product experience is you, the community. 
And it's so important for our community for you to come together. And the, the places where you go to do this is in Jamf Nation. And we love Jamf Nation. It's the largest community of Apple administrators on the planet. But there are, believe it or not, stretches where we don't have as vibrant of discussion about Apple or people aren't being reached about the good news of the things that we're doing. So last year we created the, the uh, Jamf Heroes program. And akin to the, uh, the Jamf Nation Hall of Fame, John, I see you wore your, your uh, gold jacket today. Congratulations. Uh, we, we've had hundreds of people join this Jamf Heroes program, and they're going out there and they're finding the nooks and crannies on the internet where people haven't heard about Apple management and don't know about this, and they're, they're, they're telling them about uh, the different things that they can do, and they're bringing them into Jamf Nation and giving that exposure. So uh, akin to that Hall of Fame, I'd like to announce the top five Jamf heroes for the year. Starting with number five from our friends at Secret in the Netherlands, Mike Voss. An education administrator at number four from North Central College, a well-known in EDU. We've got Leonardo de, uh, Cassi Cassiopo, sorry. <laughs> I always want to say day. <laughs> and arguably one of Jamf's most recognized education admins from the school district of Waukesha, Kim Trojanowski. Way to go, Kim. A very familiar name to the JNUX stage from UC San Diego, Eric Boyd. And at the top of the list, we may call him a super Jamf hero. From True Manufacturing, Kyle Erickson. You'll all receive a special Jamf Hero swag item. I'm told it's being delivered right to your home. Now, to close things down, uh, I, I do. I, it's customary to announce the the timing. Uh, of the subsequent JNUC, and I know that this one has been a really fun one. We moved it all the way to November, uh, so I've got really good news for you. We're bumping it back up in uh, the year, so we're going to have next year's September 29th through October 1st, but we've got more important news. The last 10 years has been fantastic here in Minneapolis. We wouldn't trade it for the world, but we decided that we are going to take this show on the road, and as such, we are moving to sunny San Diego, California. So mark your calendars. It's going to be September 29th to October 1st. Uh, early registration obviously begins right away. I hear the, the facilities are wonderful. It's going to be warm all day long. And from what I hear, the Wi-Fi is impeccable. <laughs> That's what we have for you today. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for being a part of the Jamf Nation. Have a wonderful rest of the conference.